Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, because we are here to talk about one of the all-time classics. Some people call it the greatest video game to movie adaptation of all time. And maybe, but... <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not impossible, but what a field. What a field to be the head of, you know? And even then, is it... I don't think it is, to yeah. be honest. I like the new Tomb Raider. I think that's probably up there it's for not, me. That's not bad, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you? Are you a Detective Pikachu fan? Not especially. Uh, okay. Assassin's Creed is the most boring. That is the most boring. Mm, so that's an, that's an achievement of sorts, isn't it? And I guess that's the thing about this movie is, first of all, we're covering it for a couple of reasons. Mortal Kombat is coming back with another live-action movie reboot. With a vengeance. With a vengeance. Right They're going to get you all. <laughs> That's right. Specifically. <laughs> and also, of course, Paul W.S. Anderson, who directed this. He's directing the new Monster Hunter movie. Yeah, and probably some more Resident Evil films. At probably some at some point. See, here's the thing about that guy. I quite like a lot of his movies. Why? Event Horizon, Death Race. I like okay, the first sure. Death Race. Uh -huh. yep. I like some of the Resident Evil movies or parts of some of the Resident mm. Evil movies. Uh -huh. And you know what? This is, I mean, it is Mortal Kombat, isn't it? It is certainly closer than, say, the previous year's Street Fighter to yeah. its to its origin and its its its, its uh, video game and, roots. Yeah, uh huh. And you know, people just screaming catchphrases and the names of who they are, or somebody screaming the names of who they are. Yep, uh huh. You know what I mean? All the greats. I mean, it's it's also very dated. There's a lot of like chroma key sky replacement yeah, for sure, and like morphing and mullets. The CGI is a real mixed bag, and by mixed bag I mean mostly terrible. Uh, having rewatched this yesterday, I I only just remembered that this movie has an appearance from Reptile, one of the Outworld ninjas. Yeah. Uh, and in his Reptile form, he looks like uh, a 3DO mascot. Remember <laughs> the old video game system, 3DO? Yeah. Gex. I was going to say he looks like Gex on crack. Well, they also didn't know at the not time. Not good is how Gex not would good. look on crack. That's he would right. look bad. He's not out of place in a major motion picture. <laughs> this feels like... This He's is not even wearing a suit. This is a new line production. Yeah. And it does feel absolutely like dead on with most new line stuff of the 90s. That kind of like... Before Lord of the Rings. It's dark and grainy yeah. and just... That were like this and like Dungeons and Dragons, I think they did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just... Ugh. Yeah. But that being said, I think also... There's a lot of craft in this, which, of course, is limited by what you could do at the time. There's moments where, like, Scorpion's, you know, uh, harpoon comes out of his hand, and there's, like, a few seconds where I'm like, it's not... It's okay. That's an interesting take, because in the game, obviously, he just throws, like, a like a dagger or a spear with a rope on the end. Yeah. And in this, they were like, let's just say, like, a nightmare dragonfly <laughs> snake creature that lives screams? in his hand, and it screams. <laughs> also, if you miss and hit a tree, it dies. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. It's a separate entity, I yeah. guess. Uh -huh. Also, uh, they decided that in this movie that Scorpion only speaks in variations of his catchphrase, get over here. So sometimes he might say, get down here. <laughs> get back here. That's Ed Boon. He's doing it. Ah, yep. A creator of Mortal Kombat, or one of. I think also there is some very good casting in this and some not as good casting. And some bad casting? Some bad casting. I think Liu Kang is... Excellently cast. Yeah, he later returns in a number of um, Death Race movies. Oh yeah, he does because too. I guess, I guess he and W. S. Anderson are friends. Of course so. he does. Shang Tsung is amazing. Yeah, I mean that—that's the standout performance from this, right? There's there's so many lines from this which then are folded into like other Mortal Kombat games and media and things Your like that. Your soul is mine. Your soul is mine. Your brother's soul is mine. mine. Did that guy's soul also <laughs> mine? How come he gets the souls at the end of the fight? I think it's greedy. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you have a pizza and there's the last bit and someone's like, yeah, I'll have it. No, I'll give it to me. Yeah, it's the guy. It's like, no, we're being yeah. polite, idiot. Well, there's still one piece of pizza. Yeah, but nobody soul. wanted it. Nobody, nobody wanted, wanted it. this soul. <laughs> nobody wanted the soul. So I'm guessing, what's God got to take the soul? I'll take the soul. <laughs> You're exactly right. And this, it's interesting that this, because obviously the plot of Mortal Kombat is that there is a martial arts tournament between Earth and the Outworld, the, the mysterious yeah. uh, uh, evil realm. And if they, if the, if the forces of Outworld defeat the forces of Earth, then Outworld gets to take over Earth. So the the good guy's got to win in this tournament. Yes. It, there's so much to, to unpack about the tournament, I think. But I think the number one is that there is a very rapid escalation between just like a couple of dudes fighting on a beach with <laughs> sticks, and then like a day later, you have to fight like a four-armed Goliath monster. <laughs> You know? Just, just yeah, on a precipice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah, they're just like on a beach and there's some sticks. And then it's like, you're in a forest, randomly, sure. and now you're in hell. It's sure, just like, yeah. 
Okay. I'd be more worried if I went to hell. I'd be like, if I win this, am I stuck here? If I kill him, do I live here now? Right, yeah, yeah. You know? You'd be asking a lot of questions as somebody's chasing you with a flaming skull or a <laughs> dragonfly snake. <laughs> exactly. What they actually aim to do with this, I was watching some behind the scenes stuff where they're like, Hong Kong action movies are terrible. Like the lighting's bad and they're cast weirdly and they don't look good. That's what they were saying. This is what they were saying. This, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is it, right? But they're like, but the action's good. So what we want to do, we want to combine Hollywood filmmaking techniques, but we're going to we're gonna borrow their action. So we're going to combine it. We're going to take the best element. We're going to take the only good thing they can do because everything else is utter dog shit. And we're going to make the best movie ever made. But I would argue that the martial arts in this is... Well, clearly some people can do it and some people cannot. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, some people are just acting. That's but right. Yeah, this this was not the movie that broke Hong Kong martial arts action into the West, into into Hollywood. No. That was The Matrix four years later. I was going to say that was the movie Face Off. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, this is, again, they, they tried, yeah. but they just, I mean, they said, you know, they were like, well, we've seen a few of these Hong Kong action movies, but clearly they hadn't, like, absorbed what made them yeah. great and the... Uh, you know, the long continuous shots and uh, the long combinations of moves and stuff like that. Clearly, they were just like, get a guy to sort of do a cartwheel off a rock or whatever. <laughs> Great exactly. move. That's what these movies are about. Well, because this was Paul uh, W.S. Anderson's first major movie, he would film the fights in one continuous shot and he would tire out all the actors and it had to be like people pull him aside and be like, this is not how you do it. Like, you film it in pieces. So he was right. He was, well, but I think also when you just, you know, film everything wide yeah. and it's not choreographed that well, yeah. it doesn't look great, does it? But really? I guess in the sense that, that, again, going back to The Matrix, there was a lot of training for those movies. There was months and months of martial arts training and endurance training. So it was like, yeah. okay, let's do 10 movies in a row and, and film it like that. Yeah. Whereas in this, I guess they were just like... Can you sort of do a sweep kick? Yeah. There's some really poor sweep kicks in this, Mason. Have you seen these? Johnny Have Cage? I seen this movie? Yeah, I know. You've said Johnny Cage does one early on, and then Sonya Blade does one later. Well, Lyndon Ashby, who plays Johnny Cage, is a professional martial artist. I don't artist. believe you. <laughs> do you see those big... He's doing those... No, he's spin, doing some he's stuff, He's doing those yeah. spinning roundhouse kicks. Yeah, but I right. guess, again, if, like, I think there is also a difference between being a professional martial artist and making that look spectacular for the screen. Absolutely, that's not entirely yeah. out. That's not entirely in your hands. And if, if yeah. you're like... You're right. All right, I'll do one to warm up. And then they're like, okay, that's done. <laughs> we've, done we've got the take. Out you go, kind of thing. You'd yeah. be like, you know... Exactly. Not everything goes to plan when you're trying to spin kick a giant Muppet. <laughs> You need some time to get used to that. But if they're just like, we'll do one and leave, then yeah. you're kind of stuck. Yeah, absolutely right. Question for you. Did Liu Kang's brother make it all the way to the end of the tournament? Because he's fine. Because it's a bit vague. I mean, you, I know because you can challenge anybody at any time or whatever. Did he get all the way or was it like round one? Well, you're I mean, fighting we, Shang Tsung. We only... <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Can I fight Goro at least first, please? I mean, with Did the, he get through Goro? Like, he couldn't have. I think that what we see at the start of the movie is... It's, well, it's a dream sequence. Yeah. And I think it is just... It's either part of Liu Kang's imagination or it is part of a spooky message sent from Shang Tsung oh, okay, to Liu right. Kang. So I don't... Th I think maybe he would just... I think maybe he just um, fell off that balcony onto the Mortal Kombat logo full of spikes, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the fight, like at lunchtime, <laughs> like he, hadn't, he didn't even get into the, he didn't even get into the martial arts part. <laughs> he was at that big feast, and they're like, "We're gonna, we're gonna part the tables or whatever. We're gonna bring in the the sweaty, shirtless, oiled masked men to tip all the tables." And he's like, oh, "I want to see how this plays out." And he just falls on a spike, or he just gets pinned under a table. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so there's also uh, a couple of people in this, namely uh, Shang Sun and Liu Kang, who don't know what a flawless victory is. They claim flawless victory when, they, when it's clearly not. There's been like a number of kicks and or punches. That connected without blocking and <laughs> yeah. without the loss of any of their life bars. They should have said regular victory. They should have said regular victory, yeah. By the skin of their teeth, victory. Mm, that's correct. Punch him in the balls, then a victory. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Also, speaking of it, we, we, uh, we you know, are talking about the action a lot, but really that's all this movie is. <laughs> what uh, what, else, what else we got? The acting? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I uh, don't think so. Um, got him, got him. Got him, we got him. There's a lot of, like, the heroes punching a villain or whatever yeah. and then just taking a few steps back and waiting to see how it plays out. <laughs> At one point, Johnny Cage does his signature, I'll do the splits and I'll punch Goro in the nuts. Yeah. And then he just runs away yeah, yeah, yeah. and gives Goro time to fully recover and then fights him on a on a, on a, on a, a rocky outcropping. I would argue that he didn't fully recover. He punched him in his two dicks and four balls, presumably. <laughs> true, I, yeah. I presume that's his setup. Yeah. Let's talk about Goro, though, because I guess if you're going to say that there's one thing 
like special effect that you can take away from this. It's it's the Goro animatronic rig that took between like 13 and 17 people to operate and it barely works, but it's it's mostly convincing, but it also looks like this is just going to tip over. He's got a very <laughs> odd centre of gravity, doesn't he? It's yeah. amazing that he... I, here's the thing, though. He's also Prince Goro. Yes. And we never see him fight anyone before this movie. So I think maybe he just got on there because his dad was a king or whatever. <laughs> All right, and he's, okay, and he's yeah. wanted Before he fights Johnny Cage, he just beats up a regular man in... Yes. Uh, or, a, you know, regular martial artist in an arena and oh, that guy! When everyone's like, "That guy," it's the guy, that right? Guy, no, that champion is Mr. Champion guy. <laughs> no, and flawless then, victory. Flawless victory. But then he beats him after some amount of trouble, and Goro's like, "Yes, I've done it." I reckon that was his first real win. <laughs> he just looks threatening. He's one of those guys who looks really big yeah. and, and and dangerous, so nobody ever actually tries to fight. I him. think you might absolutely be right. I think in his kingdom, you know, he's he's like a. A real oddball with a with an odd center of gravity. Yeah. On my planet, I am kind of a loser. And so, like, no one wants to. All fight the other him. Goros like distracts him, and the second crashes down behind him, and the first Goro pushes him over. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Oh, but speaking about everybody going like, no. A lot of that. There's a great deal of people absolutely not getting along, and then at the end they realize they're all the best of friends and in love. Did you, you mean notice like that? Sonya and Buddy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever his name is. The, Mr. Carry My Bags. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Carry My Bags. Mr. Mr. Johnny Cage. Sonia's acting uh, uh, tip, I think, was... I think Paul W.S. Anderson was just like, just scowl with disdain at... Ev- sneer with disdain at everything. Yeah, absolutely. this entire movie. Also, there's a scene where we're going to tie you up and tease your hair. Just tease That's it right, right out. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Uh, I remember that shot when it pans up the tower and you see her in there and it's just, just clearly on a weird green screen. Yeah. I loved it. I was like, this <laughs> I is... I loved all the parts where they're climbing... A massive tower, but it was just a green screen. <laughs> Johnny Cage loses his bags down a massive green screen. He certainly does, pretty yeah. great, right? That's it. So we get a number of classic characters, including Sub-Zero, right, mm-hmm. who is under the influence of Shang Tsung along with Scorpion. Not that that matters at all. No. It's like hinting at a backstory which is filled out in some video games which you may have played going into this. But I would have preferred the entire backstory laid out. <laughs> Okay, well, actually, um, um, Scorpion thinks that uh, Sub Zero killed uh, his his family. It was actually it was, Quan Chi. It was, it was revealed Quan- in uh, Mortal Kombat Four. That was the first. Uh, that this was, is years later. Yeah, by they the took way. it into the fighting games into Mortal Kombat into the three D realm. It was actually it was a different kind of style. It wasn't the photorealism that they'd used prior. It was a big departure from Mortal Kombat trilogy. <laughs> no! Cut for time. Also, those games hadn't come out yet. Yes, but, exactly. But uh, yeah, you're right. Mm. Uh, uh, Sub Zero um, follows the uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender movie version of preparing for a fight. Ah, oh, yes. Whereas yes. you just stand there for a really long time <laughs> while you summon your energies, and your opponent could probably literally do anything to you while yeah. while you were summoning a, like a little ice ball or whatever. Exactly, and also his weakness, uh, as we find out from Katana, is you can throw some water at him. But also, no time for this riddling around where it's like. <laughs> You must use the element which is close, whatever it is. I can't remember. She gives him a riddle when they're fighting. It's what brings life. That's Defeating right, what exactly. Brings life, yeah. yeah. Which is water, dirt, vitamin Sun. pills, Sun. <laughs> family. You must defeat him with your family. <laughs> Circle him and hit him with brooms. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Shang Tsung knows that she's like betraying him and can't hear what she's saying. Just tell him, just like, throw a bucket of water at him, mate. Just chuck a bucket of water at him. It's like... Unbelievable, yeah. Is Scorpion a big fan of Johnny Cage? Because that's how I took it. You know when Scorpion exploded? Yes. Uh, and then you see the photo of Johnny Cage signed for a second. And it's not what it's supposed to be. I thought Scorpion was a massive fan. And he'd been carrying and that, that sign photo around for years, maybe. But, uh, Before he was turned into a... De- <laughs> what happened is, obviously, uh, he was murdered yes. by, by the Lin Kuei uh, ninjas. No, it was Quan Chi, <laughs> man. Oh, all right, it. fine, whatever. Uh, and, and Mortal Kombat 4. And he's being dragged down to hell. There's a demon who's like, you can bring one thing with you. And he's like, my side photo of Johnny Cage, please. I'll take it. But it's actually Johnny Cage's friendship. It is, yeah, from it is. that is true. Two? Mortal Kombat 2? Probably two. Probably two, Thank yeah. You. Also, if you want to beat Goro, just do continuous jump kicks. <laughs> yep. That's how you do it in the game. That's yeah. how you do it in real life. You That's topple right. that that guy right over, mate. I love uh, Raiden's catchphrase. I don't think so. I love it too. He, he yeah. maybe uses it three times, and of course the movie culminates with the appearance of... His name Shao again. Khan. Shao Kahn. Yeah. Where he's as big as a tower, and he's like, I've come for your souls. I don't think so. And then there's the pose. Now, I know there's a sequel to this movie, which we will talk about Ugh. Uh, next. But how's that fight got to go, really? Like, if they had to make a proper sequel or not a bad sequel, uh-huh. you're going to well, fist fight him? Yeah, you they would have clamped cl- it up. <laughs> like Shadow of the Colossus? Punched him in the ears, <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, man. 
<laughs> You're absolutely right, yeah. The soundtrack, uh, we had a debate prior to this oh, yes. uh, recording. I said it was a massive success, and you were like, it wasn't a massive success. I, yeah, no, look, well, Wikipedia's told me mm. that it wasn't a massive success, but, I mean, that uh, does not gel with my experience with it as a kid, which was that it was everywhere all the time, yeah. and everybody loved it. Go into an arcade, it's like... In a way, James, mm. uh, it was the imagine of our time. It really was, wasn't it? Because it brought people together. Can you imagine how different the year 2020 would have been if Gal Gadot had gone and posted on Instagram <laughs> a video of herself like looking sort of beatifically at the camera and then going bam 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 and then Kristen Wiig like Mortal Kombat, bam 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 bam. You know, I think this is controversial because I know it's beloved and it was the first EDM record to ever receive a platinum certification in the United States, but it's. It's a bit much. <laughs> Is it really? Maybe I'm just getting old, but it's just like, it's from the second it starts. Yes. It's just like unrelenting. It's like being waterboarded. We're talking specifically about the single, yes. which is called Techno Syndrome <laughs> by the Immortals, which people know as the theme to Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Which was in a couple of the games. It was in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I know but, it's blasphemy yeah. to say that. But, but it is, like it is, it is. It's like sideways hail hitting you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like coming well, at what you. What I forgot, because I hadn't listened to it in a while, what I've forgotten that is, in addition to being the bam, 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 there's just samples of all the character names from, oh, the, yeah. from the game is the, the announcer saying, test your might. There's just constantly that effort of like somebody being hit where it's like, uh, 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 That's uh, what I mean. It's right? a bit much. It's incredible. Yeah. So this though, it's interesting because it does inform a lot of what is to come in Mortal Kombat. Uh-huh. So cast members, of course, have cameoed in like Mortal Kombat 11. They, they come back and they voice and they get like kind of reskinned. And there's also things in lore that have been changed. I think Kano was originally supposed to be Japanese, but because he's played Australian... Ish. Which I, yeah, well, I think Paul W.S. Anderson thought that the actor who played him was Australian, and that's why he's Australian. But I think he might actually be British in this. I can't <laughs> okay. tell what they're doing. But Paul up W.S. Anderson was like, so you're Australian, huh? Let's, we're thinking about giving you a bigger role and your character will be Australian. This guy's like, yeah, governor. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's, an Austra- that's an Australian expression, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, absolutely yeah. it is. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe the character's name originally was Kane, and they're like, well, Kane, Kano. Kano, mate. So I uh, got some Mortal Kombat trivia here, but uh, the trivia is with a K. So it's Mortal Kombat trivia. <laughs> yeah, great. You happy with that? I'm very happy with it. Yeah, good. So Van Damme actually turned down the role of Johnny Cage to appear in the Street Fighter movie. Which, of course, makes sense because they wanted to model the original Mortal Kombat game around Van Damme. That was yeah, the idea. Johnny Cage is sort of a fading martial arts superstar. Mm. Is is in many ways reminiscent or, or modelled on, on Van Damme. Yeah. Which is interesting because Van Damme then later went on to be in the movie JCVD where, in fact, he is yeah. a failing version of himself. Exactly. Yeah. I want to play that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Steven Spielberg was a fan of the game and was supposed to cameo. He couldn't make it, but of course there is the director who's like, we need you, Johnny Cage. He just he looks like Spielberg. Mm-hmm, yeah. Spielberg, of course, uh, went on to cameo as himself in Austin Powers 3. So, you know, dreams come true. <laughs> right. uh, He's like, oh, I guess I'll be in this renowned fr- comedy <laughs> franchise. <laughs> Sean Connery was the first choice to play Raiden. Connery, however, turned down the role as he wanted to play golf and wasn't interested in a physical role. Uh, but, of course, we get Christopher Lambert. He didn't want to do that one time where he flipped Liu Kang. <laughs> yeah, just the once. Well, that's the thing. So, Christopher Lambert was the highest billed cast member. He was paid the most. Also, he flew himself out on set because he was only supposed to do, like, the in-studio appearances. Okay. And he doesn't do much fighting, if any. Mm. But apparently he was, like, really gracious and really kind of brought, like, like up to the production kind of situation. He kind uh-huh. of made everyone feel more at ease. I think he's good as Raiden. I, I like so him. so too, yeah. There's a, there's a bit of a wink and a nod, you know what I mean? There really is. Yeah. And he didn't come back for the sequel, if I recall. So. No, James Rema. Ah, oh, from right. Sex and the City. That's right. Uh, that, and no other things. That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, Cameron Diaz was cast after producers saw her dailies from The Mask. However, Diaz broke her wrist during training, so she had to drop out. Oh. So they did train for this, some of them. <laughs> Seems that there you way. go. Speaking of training, I do have some questions about the Mortal Kombat tournament. Here we go. Is there some sort of magical reason they can't tell the participants from Earth that they need to beat this tournament to save the world prior to immediately inviting yeah, okay, them to yeah, it? Because yeah. like nobody knows what they're walking into. Like right? maybe you could have said, hey, in 10 years, mm. you know, this thing happens once in a generation. Well, maybe 
could get good at this. So the world doesn't end. Yeah, I guess Liu Kang sort of knows, but he doesn't believe it, even though he saw it in his mind. You know what would have helped him? What was that? Raiden showed up and was a lightning man. Maybe then <laughs> Liu that Kang would believe in the powers of people yeah. with lightning. And like trained him how to do like his, his like... Signature his, fireball, his, yeah. And kicks and stuff. Mm. Remember we did that kick? I remember we did a kick. He's good, man. He's doing some good martial arts, that dude. He knows what he's doing. Uh, anyway, back to Krivia. Um, <laughs> so according to the actor who played Johnny Cage, Lyndon Ashby, the medic on set in LA also acted as a set security guard and the man took his job very seriously. When Tom Cruise happened to be in the area and came to take a look at the set... The medic sent him off <laughs> since Cruz wasn't in the movie. Nice. Even blocking some Tom Cruise, mate. Right? He's the Johnny Cage of the Zero, I think, maybe. He is, yeah. Yeah, I think he is. He gains his power from the Shadow Realm. He's a <laughs> he's long descendant of, of, of some sort of demonic force. <laughs> exactly. And, of course, also, there's been a number of kind of spin-offs and situations that spawn just from this movie alone, right? Mm-hmm. So there was an in between quill animated movie called Mortal Kombat The Journey Begins which was released before as like a primer to be like get ready for Mortal Kombat anyway you won't understand this movie if you don't <laughs> read this if you don't see this I, uh, it's it's set on the there's these dudes and they fight you you won't even you don't even know mate so it's bad and it's set on the boat on the way to the tournament oh like and that episode of Dracula exactly like that episode of Dracula there's also some moments where they put in some a uh, bunch of like 3D stuff oh yeah atrocious and also there was I believe a Mortal Kombat live on stage production of some sort, right? I think some of them, it might have been the guy who played Kano reprised his role. Cool. I might be wrong. And there was Mortal Kombat on ice. Was it all Sub-Zero? Yeah. Great. The dancing Sub-Zeros, yeah. Just pirouettes. Yeah. Just again and again. And there was Mortal Kombat in a pit of fire. <laughs> what? It was all stuntmen in scorpion suits just burning alive. Dangerous. It's very dangerous. But that's Mortal Kombat, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know what I think also... It's a PG-13 movie, but it's not entirely toothless. They get around a lot of the deaths by being like, ah, oh, you can cut through like a scorpion because he's a skeleton man and who cares? Yeah, right, uh-huh. But you don't see like a lot of people super impaled. No, you see the bad guy get super impaled, but not super Mortal Kombat impaled. Sure, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, just to cap this off, quickly after this movie's box office success, Paul W.S. Anderson was asked by New Line to helm the sequel. But he had his mindset on doing something completely different, which is why he did Event Horizon, and he later expressed some regret over not being involved with the making of Annihilation, which he disliked, and it was one of the reasons why he remained involved with the making of the Resident Evil movies, because he wanted to shepherd the franchise. (laughs) So lessons were learnt, Mason. So his, his whole deal was, I want to be at the helm of the Resident Evil movies, because if I don't, they'll be really, really bad, and I just want them to be kind of bad. That's right, and also only some of them. (laughs) Because he only does some of them. That's right. Anyways, this has been Mortal Kombat 1995 Mortal Kombat. Uh, The next episode, we'll be back to talk about Annihilation, I guess. Great. Um, uh, Can't wait to talk about those weird spheres they get into if they want to whiz around the tunnels that exist under the Earth. I don't remember. I've only seen pieces of it, but I remember hating it. It's the worst. Good. Uh, But if you do want to see that early or any of these videos early, you can go to bigsandwich.co and sign up. Bloody give it a look, mate. We've got early podcasts there. We've got bonus podcasts we do, don't we, Mason? That's right. We've got movie commentaries there. We've got too many things there. And just also, enough things. Just enough, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we do have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday morning. Bloody check that out if you want. Please do. All right, thanks for watching this, though. Greatly appreciated. Uh, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. It's just it's a it's a lot. Right? That's what I'm saying. You could have like had some build up, yeah, have yeah. some low points. Who do you think would have said test your might? Do you think it would have been Will Ferrell or Pedro Pascal in the video? Pedro Pascal, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good. Be a good one. <laughs>